Y'all now rockin' with Ghetto Report. Ghetto Report. Ghetto Report. Ghetto Report. Ghetto Report Podcast. Ghetto Report Podcast. Hanging out with Lean. We're going to do our thing. Yeah. All the questions, man. Ask me what you want, man. We're going to have fun with this, man. You know I'm here to support, man. For sure, man. Um, Fresh off the documentary, Murder in Boston. Fresh off your 50th birthday party, looked like the whole city was there. You know what I'm saying? It looked crazy. I missed a good one, man. Um, how was that? Um, that was that was that was a um great great night, man. Um, you know, just to have a lot of the people that supported me for years, that knew me for years, that came out. You know, other people. Some people were adversaries at one time or another, but you know, uh, it's going into um. You know, the prison system, man, and meeting up in those places, in those atmospheres, we was able to make sure that, you know, things that needed to be hashed out got hashed out. And, you know, when we got out here, man, it wasn't no sense of keeping up no nonsense when we grown men now. Okay. Well, I like that, man. So, you was, so people that was at your party, you once had issues with back in the day. Oh, yeah. yeah. I pretty much had issues with a lot of the city. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I was, you know, yeah, it was, it was a lot of people there that, um, you know, we didn't get along with. Some was more serious than others, um, you know, but the respect thing was that, that, that's what, you know, touched me the most. It was just like, even dudes that didn't like each other, never mind my situation, yeah. dudes that, you know, still didn't like each other from back in the days. They was able to stay over in one corner and mind their business, enjoy themselves, and, you know, other dudes is on that corner. It looked like the ATL movie, man. Yeah. You had the Jack Boys over here. You had yeah. the Dope Boys over here. You had the Gang Bangs over there. So, you know, it was it was a nice time, man. And you had the little females that scattered everywhere else. Yeah, I seen some. I seen the pictures and the videos. I definitely was supposed to come, but I was in the crib with the kids. I'm always with the kids, but... um. The whole city was there. I'm like, God damn, that shit was packed, you know? Yeah, they was even outside. Like, I, I I, didn't even know until my man sent me a picture of the parking lot. I was like, okay. You know, it felt good. Plus, it was free. Yeah. I can't say come party with me. Didn't want to charge you $20. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to have a good time, man. That's what meant the most. Like, no issues, no fight. Everybody got out of there. And everybody went home safe. You know what I'm saying? The city said they had a good time. That's what. That's what it was all about for me. Okay, that's what's up, Toot, man. Um, we're going to get into it, man. You know, you got a lot going on, you know what I'm saying, fresh off that documentary that's kind of crazy. But um, growing up in Mission, tell us about that. Yeah, um, like I said in the documentary, um, you know, it was fun for me. Like, I was a kid. I used to just have so much fun. My mom, you know, she let me run wild. You know, um, but my grandmother is still disciplining me, so, you know, um, and my uncle just inspired me yeah. to, you know, and I just, you know, just took place, man, just, just that place right there was like, was, because when my childhood, I think it was one of the funnest times for me mm -hmm. growing up in the project, because, you know, I love dirt bikes, man, I, I love basketball, you know, things like that, I mean, we had our ups and downs in the neighborhoods, but we stuck together a lot in that neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, that's what's up, man. Um, any siblings? Well, yeah, I know, so but I, got, I, I, got, I know, I got, but I got you know for the people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got, I got, um, I got a couple brothers and you know, a couple sisters, couple cousins that are like sisters, and yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's a big crew of us. Yeah. Um. So, where'd you get your name from, too? Ooh. <laughs> Um, that was a childhood name. Like that was that was that childhood name. Like growing up, we have a whole family of childhood names, and one of my aunts had gave it to me, I believe, you know. And it was it was <laughs> my brother's nickname is Train, so yeah. you know what I'm saying. It was only right I was two, right. so you know what I'm saying. Um, we got a few other ones in the family. Okay, so is your brother older than you? Or? He's younger than me. He's yeah. 46. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's forty six. He's 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 a um successful young man. He do what he do. Um, I'm proud of him. He's never been to jail. You know, he mm -hmm. he, he changed his life. He went to DYS as a young kid, yeah. and that's where it stopped. That you know, he's trying to um 
Dude thinks he got a nice family. He lives out in a suburban neighborhood. You know, okay. he used to be a ball player. Then that Stewart case happened, and um, you know, a lot of the colleges shied away from him because he was definitely wow. a D one ball player. You know, he was one of the the nice ones that came out of them projects also. But he was quiet. But he played against the likes of the Tony uh, Tinies and all of them yeah. dudes. So he played with all of them. So yeah. you know, when that uh, Stewart situation happened. He had scholarships to, like, Providence College and all that, and they removed it from him, and, you know, he just went on with his life. Because of the, na- the name, the family, and everything. So. Yeah, the Bennett name. Yeah. Um. Damn, that sucks. College, like, he, he ain't got nothing to do with this situation. Nothing, like, nothing. come on, man. So, yeah, because Mission raised a lot of ball players. Um. <laughs> Generational ball yeah, players. Like, ain't Wayne Turner from there? Yeah, Wayne, Wayne Turner's Turner. from there. Uh, Shabazz Napier, Shabazz Napier. Uh, Will Blaylock, Will Blaylock, yeah. Tony Lee, uh, Tony Lee, Randell okay. Jackson, Randell's from there too. Yeah, Randell. Okay, Jackson. I know Randell. Okay. Yeah, yep. that's crazy. Jamal Jackson, rest in peace, played with us. Yes. Yeah, I think you might just be claiming niggas now, man. Oh, Jamal man, Jackson better, from there. Man, you better ask somebody. Okay, man. okay. Jamal Jackson, man, come on, baby, that was him. We okay. made sure he got to his game safely, man. Okay, okay, that's what's <laughs> up, man. Um. So so you got a couple brothers, couple sisters, and um how was it like growing up with them? Did um y'all growing fight a up lot? back growing up, man, was fun. Like we used to, you know, back then we had the big old jukebox TV, man. Yeah. So, you know, the soul trains would come on, you know, we would have our little fun dance offs, competitions and you know, family family time was a lot, man. It was good growing up in them households. Yeah. Was um when did they do the projects over? What side? The, they did them both um, over. <laughs> um, let me so say this. Not the Spanish at, side, the other the, side. So what I grew it? up on the Spanish side. Okay, you grew up on the Spanish side. Yeah, I grew that up. That joint, that joint was, used to look rough. Oh, man. right. That's the, where I grew the, up. Man. That yes. shit looked rough. Yes. They had the big, um, like the <laughs> shit around it before yes. you go to the building. Like the, it, like, was, it was, yeah. it was, it was, that's why I said for y'all that look at it is like rough. It was yeah. for us. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, you know look, what I'm bro. saying? Yeah. Because you, everybody knew who your kid, who your mom was, yeah. who your parents wasn't back in those days. Like, you know, they all stuck together. Yeah. Like, families would discipline the next kid. So, which led me over to the other side, which right. is the new side, the yeah, Annunciation side. Yeah. Rose yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because my grandmother used to always be like, oh, if you get me evicted, I hope you got somewhere to put me at. And, the, you know, the people that lived around there, they knew me since I was a kid. So if they see the police chasing me on the dirt bikes and I'm going up the stairs and losing them and parking a dirt bike in front of the house. And, you know, my grandmother's upset because now the people, I ah, ain't see two. They was just chasing them down here. And, you know, so it was always something. So I figured out another method, which was going the other side. Oh, yeah. Go to the <laughs> Where nobody side. knows my grandmother, they can't tell on me. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, did, so you grew up on the Spanish side. Did, did people used to um, talk trash about that, you know? Like, man, you yeah, on the Spanish side. that's the dirty side. side. That's yeah. the dirty side. Yeah. It's the Spanish side to a lot of people now, but it's the dirty side. Yeah. You know, that's, it was that's, a difference. Yeah, that's the dirty mm-hmm. side, man. It was, it was grimy and gritty and, yeah. you know, that Smith Street, boy. You know, that was a... Um, that side, man, I could tell you, was a side that made um, a lot of people rich. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was a kid, and there was a lot of people that were getting 80s money, 70s money, 90s yeah, money, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it was free fall. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a neighborhood. That side was cool with anybody that came through here. So I got the chance to meet different individuals that from different neighborhoods yeah. that were older. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's what's up. Yeah, that um mission kind of remind me of OP. Like my grandmother is from OP, my mom's from OP. Her whole family, they all from down there, but it kind of resembled it. You know, um when 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 did the things change for you? You like getting in trouble and stuff like that. At what age did you start to get in trouble? Um well, I was I was always a troubled youth. I mean, I was in and out of DYS, so um I gotta say, when when that case happened in 1989, when that you know hoax happened, yeah, I think that's what made me angry, made me bitter, 
made me not trust people. You know, made me want to just um, be different. Yeah. Um, we're gonna get into that. Um, you lived at Seven Alton Court. Yeah. You. That's with your mom's. That was with my grandma. Oh, that was with your grandmother. Yeah, that was my and, grandma. And, and your mom, and that's on the Spanish side as well? Yeah, that's the, yep, the dirty your, side, okay. not the Spanish side. The you dirty can't say side. The Spanish side. Okay, yeah. my fault. But we, you got you know, blacks we, on that we, side. Uh, You're right. Dirty you side. right. We, we, like, see, we from Dorchester, so we call that, you know, the Spanish yeah, side. Yeah, I don't see many Spanish people yeah. on Dorchester. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so let me, oh, let me backtrack. So, is that where the Hoyas was at? Would you, you a Goya Hoy- boys? Or go the Goyas? They wore the Ho- the, the Georgetown Hoyas yeah, hat. The, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Goya yeah, boys. the Goya boys. Yep. Did you have a Georgetown Hoyas hat? I I, I did. <laughs> they was at my party too. Oh yeah, they was there. Baby. Okay, they okay, deep, yeah. man. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Old school mission, huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, yeah. I like that, man. Um, so wh- wh- where did your mom live in Mission? She lived at um 44 Token Court on the on the dirty side on too. On the dirty side. Okay, too. so yeah. your mom lived in Mission. And your grandma lived in yeah. Mission. Okay. Um, my aunt lived in Mission. My other aunt lived in okay. Mission. Uh, it's the a, whole family was in Mission. Yeah, so that's like me. My mom, my grandma lived in Mission. I mean, in OP. My grandma lived in OP. My mom lived around the corner in OP. My aunts, you know, they lived. <laughs> right. Her aunts lived all down there. But, yeah, um, so you was removed from the home by DCF? Yeah, when um, <laughs> I got caught, man, I, I had some... Back then, we used to um, have the crack vials, so I got caught with, like, 50 of them. And I got caught with them in school at that. What school? It was the Tobin School. Oh, right around um, the corner. Yeah, so, you know, um, there was um, a teacher that, you know, was always... Like, on me, mm. on me. So, like, I used to always just want to make sure that I did good because that teacher was teaching me. But then when that happened, like, I didn't trust no teachers no more either like that. You was know that the saying? teacher because, that was on you? Yeah, because that he brought my coat up. Well, she brought my coat up. He gave it, she gave it to him, and he gave it to the police, but... My coat, I had some jumps in my sleeve. And when I had the jumps in my sleeve, when they picked up my coat, it fell out. Yeah. And, you know, they was like, is this your coat? I was like, nah, that ain't my coat. They, they, I said it was my coat, but then they said, is this your coat? I was like, nah. But they ain't believe that shit. So they took me to jail, DYS. DY, uh, DCF came into the home, um, interrupt my family, you know. Yeah. went there. Well, how old was you at the, that time when when that happened to you? Seventh grade, so like 12, 13. Seventh grade, okay. And you had some jumps. Yeah. <laughs> well, like 50 jumps. Yeah, I was selling for the older dude. Yeah, okay. So, um. I was working hard to get my scooter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when you um when you get caught with the the jumps, they take you to DYS. Is uh the police question you about this or? Yeah, of course they ask me where it come from. I don't know. Man. I found them out in the hallway, man. Yeah. You know, why you had them? I everybody else had them. I wanted to make some money. We poor. Yeah. So what happened with um the case? You end up doing just DYS. Got yeah, I got or? I got like eight months. I got committed to my 18th birthday. That was pretty much like. The, the start of the in and out, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think at that, that time I did like eight months, probably yeah. less than that, six months. Yeah. And then got back out and was, that pretty much was like, oh, I could do this. Yeah. So because of this incident, they removed you from your mom's? Yeah. And then you they went- was going to move, they was going to remove my brother also. So my grandma was like, no, nah, she'll take us. Yeah. You know so she saying? took you and your brother who, Train? Yeah, my brother Train. Okay. LaJuan is his name. Okay. Yeah, yeah, train. Yeah. Oh, train. We call <laughs> yeah, him train. Yeah, yeah, yeah LaJuan. Okay. Um, so, how how was it like when you went to your grandmoms? Was it more freedom? Was it more like okay, this is the place to be? No. 
Okay, she was more strict. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mom's crib was loose. Mom's crib was, yeah. you know, it was going on in that crib. It was yeah. party time. You know, those are the 70s and the 80s and yeah. mom's crib. But grandma's crib was like big mama's house. You you, you come over there, you, you get right. You, you get your shit together. You go to school. You come downstairs, eat your food. And, you know, but I still was able to maneuver and be outside, though. You know what I'm saying? She didn't have a... A short leash on me, but she had gave me enough room yeah. to do what I needed to do. And you know, I mean, at fourteen and stuff, I'm still bringing money into the house, but I give it to one of my aunts, and they make sure that there's food in the refrigerator and stuff like that. Okay, so they was covering for you. Yeah, yeah okay. I, that's mean, a... I had to toss them some. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You gotta look out for them, otherwise they're like, <laughs> nah. Um. So how how did this um documentary come about? Um so a certain I ain't gonna mention him because he, he did some other stuff. So a certain reporter had reached out. So initially when I first came home, um I guess we'll get to that later. So yeah. you know, um initially when I first came home I tried to do a documentary you know, I was on like yard time. You know, I was on. I wanted to do everything with somebody that I know mm -hmm, from, mm -hmm. you know, in the jail, in the prison system. You know, and I, I had did something with this guy. Um, you know, CJ. We had started it, and um, it didn't come to fruition. You know, he had a situation. I had mine, so we had went our separate ways. Um, me trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. I had shopped it with some other. Um, network people and they kind of liked it interviewed me then they didn't like it then they lost their deal and you know so a reporter had reached out to one of my mentors john jackson and was trying to get him to talk and wanted to host something on that and you know i i i ain't the, the you know um, let me say this right the correct way when you got to do something around that neighborhood as far as, like, with that case, you know, people going to reach out to me and my family mm -hmm. first before they co-sign anything. So I had told them to tell them to have a conversation with me. Don't go around to my family and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, we don't want to talk about it. It's like, you know, for us, it's, it's, it's yeah. reliving trauma and be mm -hmm. victimized again. But I already knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't want to do it with nobody that wasn't willing to, um, you know, financially support it. Mm -hmm. and do, they just wanted it. You know what You're I'm right. saying? Like, you just want this to go away. So this ain't right, you know? Now, nah, this is 34 years of trauma, you know? And, um, yeah. After that reporter reached out, the, the, the documentary dudes, HBO, got involved. Um... I talked to HBO executives, the uh, Little Room Films. That's the name of that company. So they was doing that. My man Jason here, man, he's the doc. He's the director for the Michael Jordan film, um, mm -hmm. The Last Dance. Me and him sat down plenty of times, and we was able to come to a great understanding, man. And um, the way he was, where he was taking it, I just thought they was trying to just do it and do it in a manner of from the police perspective all over again and, mm -hmm. you know, victimize my family all over again. And when he shared his vision for it, I was like, oh, this is the guy. Like, I want to back everything that you want, what you need. Yeah. You know, pitches, whatever you need, I want to do it. Yeah. You know, because the way he delivered it to me made sense, and that's where we was trying to bring it to. Okay. Yeah, because, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, they do these documentaries, like you say, and they – Tell it from the police perspective or somebody else's perspective, but not the actual people that was really affected by this. You know what I'm saying? And especially this caused a lot of racial tension in Boston. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like when you if you look at his interviews, he says it a lot. Like you know, he wanted it to be from the Bennett perspective and and, and make sure that you know it's not from this other guy's perspective ever again. You know what I'm saying? It was more so. He wanted to get the apology, you know, that we deserved and needed, you know. And this is a guy that was coming from Newton, mm -hmm. you know. And so many other people was in position to do this way before him, and they didn't. 
know? Yeah. I, I don't think they understand, like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people might not understand, like, what it means, like, to get the real story and, the, and come from the, the people from the hood with their story is always better than the mother's story. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's way better than the mother's right. stories. Um, so um, let's dive into this. Um, October 23rd, 1989. Charles Stewart and um, Carol Stewart were coming from a burping class at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Charles called 911 and said his wife was shot. Um, Carol would later die six hours um, later on um, October 24th, around 2.50 a.m. She had a gunshot wound, wound to her head. I don't know if she had it anywhere else. Charles was also, also shot as well. Um, he said a black man did it. Black man, black. A black man, a Adidas track suit or something like that. Black and red Adidas track suit. And I had a black and red Adidas track suit in the 80s. Who didn't? <laughs> That's <laughs> like, who didn't have that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like in Boston, especially now, you got some Adidas on there? Because, no. okay, because I know all you old heads. It's See, I got to, you know what I'm saying? I got to go there because. A lot of them don't want to wear Nike, and I'm like, come on, man. Them days is, you know, threes and trees. I know, them I know. Days is over for me. You okay. know, I will. I, I think I got like four pairs of Adidas, <laughs> but nah, they're not really I, a com- I, they're not really comfortable. The yeah, old ones. No, that's the reason why. You know, <laughs> I got some big feet, man. Yeah. Wide feet, so <laughs> they're narrow. Yeah, so he says Adidas. Tra- I'm pretty sure you had one. Everybody had, I had one. one. I like it, had at one. this time, I everybody. So that's why I don't understand, like. That was kind of crazy, you know? And um, when you initially heard about this situation, what did you think? So, um, me and my boy Tweet, rest in peace, we were in, like, Columbia Point. You know, I was, we was driving stolen cars back then. We used to get from the airport. Um, and we had got a page that, you know, something happened around the neighborhood. Mad, you know, mad poop. Police is around there. Somebody got shot, but nobody knew who got shot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So on our way there, we just seen like hell of police, bro. So at that time, we used to, you know, be involved in things the way we would carry things, and um, we couldn't even get into the project. So we parked the cars and Ruggles projects across the street from Mission. Yeah. And we walked in the projects. And when I say, when you see my reaction on that documentary, when I say there was police everywhere, there was police everywhere. Yeah. You knew it wasn't no regular person that got shot that right. day. Because people get shot in Mission Hill. I say it, I reiterate it, and they never came like that. Right. Yeah, so um, y'all walked in the projects dirty? No, okay. we left you them left in the, the car. We okay. left them in the so car. So when y'all walked in the um, projects, did y'all get harassed by the police? Yeah, as soon as soon that soon as we got soon as we got to the Annunciation Road, as soon as we got on Albert Terrace Street, like like immediately. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so um, nineteen eighty nine. A lot of people might not know, they might be younger or whatever, but nineteen eighty nine. Um, in 1990, 88, 89, 1990, it was a lot of violence. So there was a lot of murders at this time. I remember 1989 and 1990, I believe it was back-to-back 150 murders, something like that. It was a lot of gang violence at the time. So you probably just assuming at first when you get the page, somebody from the hood, <laughs> yeah, you get down shot. there. Right. Now, right. It's, this is not that. This is not that. This is not that. And I I just remember, like, I know it was a, the focus was on Mission Hill, but at the time, I felt like the whole city was on oh, high alert because it of that. It was going everywhere. But like, like you, you know, what I did see, what I didn't know from the documentary is the way they had to find them, mm-hmm. the way they was turning their sirens on and off all around the city, yeah. getting close to that. I never knew that. Yeah. I mean, I, how would I know that until the documentary showed that? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and I'm like, yo, this is how... Everybody in the city felt like trapped in because they they are literally trying to corner in the whole little Roxbury basically mm-hmm. to find these one two people, yeah. and 
somebody probably done got shot on Blue Hill Ave somewhere. Right. This, crazy. It was crazy, man. So, um, watching the documentary, right? Um, Derek Jackson talked about certain police officers, fat and skinny, blonde Sean, high tower, and said they were no good. Um, do you know any of them? Yeah, all of them. Cookie, Jimbo. Okay. Okay, so you had you had run-ins with them? Yeah, they were our, they were our neighborhood cops. Okay, like y'all, you know, they were they were the yeah. cops that patrolled the neighborhood. They yeah. did it seven to three, three to eleven, <laughs> you know, yeah. eleven to seven. Those were the regular cops there, yeah. so they knew us, we knew them, and they yeah. And they you, you seen them out there that night? Nah, or? man, I can't even tell you who I seen. It just that was night. chaos. It was chaos, man. It was cops that I never seen. Okay, so um, so when you go when you go on mission, when did you find out it was a white man and his wife that was shot? The next day. The next day, on the news or mm. the paper. Okay, um, you know Trent Holland too. He was. They say he's, I, he's yeah, a dirty cop. He is a dirty cop. Okay, why you say that? Well, he placed some cocaine in my room so I can get arrested. But that night when they raided my house looking for my uncle. Oh, yeah? Yeah, in the documentary when my wall was ripped yep. up mm -hmm. and all that. And when my aunt said that they was all in my room, yeah, they had to bring something. They had to take me out of there in order for me to go to the station and be questioned as they did the other kid, you know. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, um. He, how much drugs did he place? Nah, I wasn't nothing big. Probably like a little sixteenth, just a little something, just yeah. to get me arrested, yeah. to get me down to police station because they had no reason to take me out of my grandmother's yeah. house. Of course, they got to find a reason. They got to find a reason, yeah. and that was the reason. My yeah. aunt yelled it like, "What you just put in his jewelry box?" Oh, she saw him. Yeah, she yelled it. She she yelled it. Wow. And like I just told you, like I said, I didn't sell powder, so yeah. why would I have powder? I was. Selling crack. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. So um he, obviously he's a he's a white cop, right? No, he's black. He's a black cop and he did this? He's a black cop. Oh man. Yeah, he's like he has Damn. this little Napoleon complex. He's like five, five one, probably even less than that, four eleven. Uncle Tom, huh? Yeah. Um No, he wasn't Uncle Tom. He was a he was a, a house. He got to be weird. Well, he's Uncle Tom. If he's <laughs> yeah. house nigga, Uncle Tom, all that. Same thing because, yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, you on this side? Like, you doing yeah, a brother's nah, dirty was, like this? Was, like, come was, on, man. He was brutal, too. He was, And he didn't just limit it to Mission Hill. He was a detective that was moving around the city. Like, everybody knew. Okay, so um, did he retire? Or he's still on? Or yeah, I'm assuming on? they all retired. Yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming they all retired. Um. I heard he was a professor at a college that he teaches criminal justice. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So and you yeah. see the other guy, he's the only one that had the balls to get on camera. Yeah. You know, because all the rest of them want this to go away. Yeah. The ones that are alive want it to go yeah. away. Like, they don't yeah. want to, you know, yeah. have it where they want to bring this back up and talk about it. They All they want to do was bury it, yeah. and they buried it for 34 years. That's crazy. So we, we, we're going to get back to the raid later. So Mayor Flynn said he told the commission and police to be aggressive as they ever have been. What were they doing? What weren't they doing, man? They was they was pretty much molesting us, man. They had you outside. It was in October, brother. They, they was, we was naked. They was stripping you. They was stripping you in the cold. Like, they was putting you up against the fence, the wall, the pole, the the, the, the car, whatever the, wherever your hands landed, that's where you was at. That, yeah. You know, they didn't they didn't let up. They didn't let up. They didn't let up. And that's, 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 that's the reason why we decided to go into my grandmother's house and smoke some weed. Because yeah. we used to hang in the hallways as kids. Yeah. You know? But they wouldn't let up. Yeah. So they, they was all on the roofs and everything? They was all over the roofs. They was in the hallways. They was coming through the hallways. They was circling the projects. They was allowing things to go, like, where people were just scared to come outside. It was under siege. Yeah. Was under siege. I know they was doing it in other neighborhoods, but it was under siege. Yeah. 
Um, what are, um, a lot of people being arrested for like other things as a result just of these random crime yeah. warrants just to get people down the station to talk to yeah. see what they knew. Oh, you got a warrant. Oh, let's go. Um, that's crazy. So, um, they found Alan Swanson with an Adidas tracksuit and a bunch of newspapers of the Carol Stewart murder. That was, um, eight Cornelia court. Is that where they raided us? Yeah, that's where he was at. He yeah. was squatting there. He was squatting. Yeah, he was squatting um, there. And that was so crazy because my aunt lived on the third floor, and that was one of the houses she raided. They raided. They raided your aunt's house too. Yeah, that lived on the third floor. Like Why they did, simultaneously hit every house. Like uh, all they didn't just floor. all in one. Like yeah. they at a certain time raided two of my aunt's cribs, my grandmother's house, and the house where they found my uncle at. All at one oh, time. Yeah. Where they find your uncle at? In Burlington. Oh, okay. Um, how they know where he was at? Well, that's a good question. We still trying to figure it out. The, they tracked him down. Yeah. I'm telling you, they haunted him down, man. And there was, there was, you knew they, yo, your family knew, everybody knew they was looking for him at this time. No, they, we no. didn't know until no. they came. <laughs> okay, that's crazy. That's and it. they found him, huh? <laughs> In Burlington. That's it. We didn't know until they came. He was still living his life. He wasn't hiding. Yeah. That's crazy, um, especially back then. Like yeah, it's, it the was, resources ain't the same yeah, as now. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, that's why they made sure to hit the houses all at the same time, so that nobody can call and say, "Hey, they came here." Yeah. Um. When did you hear about Derek Jackson and the recorded statements he made about you and your uncle? Um. To what extent? I didn't hear into the. The documentary, but I knew there was statements made um, pretty much when my uncle got arrested. Yeah. So you didn't know he, what exactly he said until you heard um, that. And, and, and what the documentary is, didn't clarify was that there was a $25,000 reward, which is why they chose to go in there and make those false allegations. Oh, so they were trying to collect money. Yeah, as kids. It was Well, they were 17. I was a kid. I don't know what. Like, I told people I was raised differently, man, so I don't know who they was raised with, but yeah. they was trying to get, at the time, $25,000 was a lot of money for a 17-year-old kid that has less than nothing. Okay, so, because Derek said he was forced to say these things by the police. Yeah. Do you I believe, believe? he was forced after he initially tried to get the money. The story. I believe that he filled them in with all that stuff that needed to happen. Yeah. I believe that, but initially... To go and say what he said was for a reward money. Yeah. Um, do you speak to Derek? Yeah, say hello and goodbye. <laughs> and how long has it been like I, that? I mean, I, it- I mean, honestly, like I have no animosity. I just had somebody put me in jail um, wrongfully, serve a life sentence. I, I, I mean, I don't have no animosity on him. You know what I'm saying? I don't hang with him. I don't you know, fraternized with yeah. him and none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually convinced him to do the documentary because he wouldn't have. Yeah. And I told him, like, he needs to tell his side of the story. If he does it, they're going to play these tapes. Yeah. Like, I, I invited him to come be yeah. a part of the documentary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he wasn't. Yeah, so, see, see, that's a good point, too, because I was confused, too, because I was, like, wondering, like, damn, why the hell he do this documentary? You, you don't look too favorable on this documentary you know with these tapes and stuff but now I, I understand why because they was going to play them anyway yeah, that's so what now I told you got to so tell I, your side he, of the story you know why and when conversations was going on they wasn't going to include him you know and then they was like oh we got the tapes and I'm listening to the tapes and I seen them and I was like yo you know you want to participate you was a young man I mean yeah. I ain't I ain't you know I ain't <laughs> I ain't calling you no names yeah I, but, ain't, I ain't bothering you you know yeah. what I'm saying so and he was like, nah, I was like, all right. I sh- let him listen to a tape one day, and he was like, man, I was like, yeah. So you could tell your side of the story. They was just going to play this tape. Yeah. So, okay, uh, they didn't play all of the stuff he said. Heck no. So there's a lot more that he said. Heck yeah. So what can you tell us that he said in them, in them rooms, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, man, it was, it was a whole lot, man. He said that my uncle came in. Showed me the gun, gave me the gun, handed me the gun. I was passing the gun around. 
you know, I showed them the gun. Um, then I put the gun away. He said, put the gun away. Don't do that. You know, don't let nobody see and all this crap that they didn't say that they didn't show because, um, he said the police made him say it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The police made him say it. They beat him up. They did this and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, him and the kid, Eric Whitney. Eric Whitney. I know that. Yeah. So, you know, I got everything here. You know, come <laughs> on, too. I'm on point. So, Eric Whitney, right? Um, You was friends with him as well? I grew up with all of them. Yeah. Okay, so... So, Derek, he said he also talked to Eric Whitney about the incident. He said... He think two's bullshit or whatever the case may be about the situation, right? Mm -hmm. So he, so, but Eric lied to his mom that you got rid of the gun. So that's what I heard, um, that Eric lied to his mom. But Eric lied, period, because Eric never was in my house. Yeah. <laughs> he never was part so of that session. He, that's why I'm explaining to you. That's why that story was concocted on trying to get right. a $25,000 reward. Okay, he did. So Eric said so he was in your house. There's a guy named Leroy Cox that was part of that okay. equation. It was, three, it was of three of them. Three of them. Yeah. So they was going to split 25,000 three ways. Yeah. Okay, so. Probably um, four because the mother was, you know. Okay. So Eric, see, because um, Derek said he talked to Eric about it. He, re he relayed the message, but Eric also said he was in your house too. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> um. So his mom is the one that ended up reporting the. Crime to the police? Yes, his mom was um, dating Trent um, Holland. The cop? The cop. <laughs> oh, man, this story gets crazy and crazy. Yeah. Um, wow, there's this a lot of dirty shit going on. So did you hear tapes on all three of them? I did not hear tapes on all three of them because I chose not to even get packed like, in that mind frame of what... Um, they did. Eric passed away. Their mother passed away. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I wanted to target the people that was more out here and expose them for what they were doing. Okay, so, but there was tapes on them, though. There was tapes. I had a assault and battery case where me, um, my man Tweet and Terry Price from St. Joe's had jumped Eric. On a train at one time where I went after got, this. Yeah, I got a witness intimidation case during this during this whole thing. Wow. So yeah. Eric went and told again. Yeah. Him and his girlfriend. And we we after this incident happened, Eric's from Mission, right? Yeah, he grew up in Mission. So he left Mission? And after? went to Norfolk Street. And oh, you had to throw that in there, huh? Went to Dorchester, huh? Well, I thought uh, that's why he was bringing it up. No. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So, Eric, damn, that's crazy. So, um, Eric passed away at what year? I have no idea. Okay. Oh, this 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 story is crazy. I didn't know all this. Um, so Eric, Eric, Derek, and who? What's the other kid's name? His name is Leroy Cox. Leroy Cox, man, Cox, and he's from Mission as well too. <laughs> yeah, okay. And you used to be around these. No. Oh, you just grew up with them. Yeah. Okay, I mean, yo, in this day, Derek, in this well, in this particular day, this particular day, um, you know, it was a few of us that I didn't hang around, but it was like, like I said, my grandma's was cool. You know, I got Nintendo. We could smoke over here. We yeah. could have sessions. You know, I'm 15. I'm doing what I want. You know, to a certain extent, and she sees all the police out there, so yeah. she'd rather my ass be in the house than to be trying to smoke in the hallway. Yeah, didn't get in trouble. Yeah. Okay, so you didn't, re you or your family didn't realize none of this happened until they raided the house. Yeah. And that they was looking for your uncle. Okay. Um, so y your grandmother said a police. There was another lady that made statements. Um, man, this is crazy. Oh, man. okay. <laughs> Tell us. This there was lady. a lady named Mary Smith. She made a statement saying she seen my uncle running with a black sweatsuit that night. You know, there was a lady named um, Tony Jackson that made a statement that, um, also said that, you know, her and her moms had seen my uncle. A lot of this stuff ain't in the documentary because, you know, they only got to do so much. But I'm giving you the raw. Yeah. I'm giving you the ghetto report. Yeah, for sure, man. We appreciate it. So um, these people that made statements, why do you think they made these statements? All, all rewards. They was all, you know, offered reward money and things like that, man. Mm -hmm. They put it out there. So the reward, it went up to 25. I think it was 25000 
Might even went up to 50,000. So was they coached? They had well, to be coached. 100 percent. And who coached them, you think? I would say Dunn, Officer Billy Dunn. Bill, Bill Dunn, okay. Billy Dunn. Why, why would you say Billy Dunn coached them the versus leader. Trent? He was oh. the leader of this whole uh, task force. It, this was his neighborhood. Yeah. You see the documentary? He, yeah. He's still a narcissist. Yeah. Nobody else want to talk. You see, he got on there and talked. Yeah. Thank God he got on there. Yeah, I know. His eyes messed up, too. I've seen that, too. I don't know what's wrong with his eye. But, um... Yeah, he was arrogant. You know, um, imagine him when he was younger. He, right. Like I said, when he was riding that Bronco, he would knock me off my dirt bike. He would chase you down. He like, you know, some of the things Derek said pertaining to him was true. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he was not no little dude. He was like six four. Yeah. Like he was a big boy. Yeah. You know. So your grandma said the police stole money when they raided the house. Yeah. You know, at the time we wasn't. We didn't have much. So. When they raided the house, when they tipped the house upside down, you know, that's the only thing she's looking for. She yeah. don't for that. You know, that's 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 lunch money, food, that's 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 Everything. rent money, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like it, it wasn't much, but it was it was what she knew she had, you know right. what I'm saying? And yeah, that's what they did. So when they stole this money, right? Um did they document it? No, right? Of course not. Okay. They took a lot of things out of that house that they didn't document, which is what led them to hold my uncle for a Brookline armed robbery because they said some of the evidence from what was in my bedroom was matched from some of the evidence that was taken from a Brookline store robbery, which was bullshit. Yeah. What did they take that they said? Like video, like, you know, the old blockbuster video yeah, tapes yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. things like that, saying that it was un- it scanned out. You know, I'm like, come on. I'm a little kid. I used to steal from blockbusters and shit. Yeah. Shit, like, come on, man. Yeah, I used to, um, when, uh, back in the day, I had somebody who worked at Blockbuster used to give us all the videos. All the videos, you know what exactly. Saying? So <laughs> come in there Friday night, get whatever yeah, you want. get what you want. Get, get what you want. scanning none of it. Yeah, so um, that's crazy. Um, So they messed up the house, and Dunn said the house looked, <laughs> um, didn't look any better to try to cover up um, the damages they did to the house. Yeah, man. Um, you know, no, we didn't live like that, bro. Like, of course, like I had a I had a grandmother that was like down south, clean, yeah. walk around like I said, big mama dragging her feet. She yeah. didn't go out much. She sent her grandkids to the store. She clean. She cooked. Like, no, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah, he was arrogant, um, you know, SOB. Um, so you was playing with a gun that ended up going off in the house into the wall. <laughs> police, right? Yes. Okay, so police thought they had a match to the mur- murder weapon because it was a it was a thirty eight as well? Yeah, so I had this little old school thirty eight, mm-hmm. and they used to jam it. Yeah. Click. Click. And G- Got to keep pulling it back. Yeah, yeah okay. so I don't know what, I think one day I was just like, trying to put the bullets in and close it and I did one of them numbers and it was like yeah and went off and I never knew where it went I ain't look for it I was like ain't nobody yelling downstairs or nothing so I'm good so who was in the house when that happened? Um, probably everybody. I don't remember who else, but you know, my grandma would just say nothing. She probably didn't. She probably didn't even give a damn. Like you know, yeah. my aunt, my aunt would have been nosy. So my aunt wasn't there. I know that for a fact. Yeah. And my probably my little cousins and them was downstairs watching TV or something because yeah. we had a three floor. Like we was one of the only. Um, we it was two families, but um, we had the first floor, second floor, and the third floor. We had all three floors. Yeah. You know so. We didn't have nobody that was living under us or nothing like yeah. that. Um, when they raided raided the house, did they find that gun in the house? Oh. No, they didn't find that gun. They didn't find nothing. Just planted drugs. No, oh, they found a bullet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you was in. You said you was there, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Man, I never seen so many police, bro. I don't even know what they look like. They probably, bro. They was had black mask on with. Shields and damn near AK 47s, bro. Like they was mean in business, yeah. Like you couldn't move. Like they threw my aunt and them down the stairs, bro. Like they tossed them people down the stairs. Like I had to go to DYS with boxes on. Like they did us foul that night. Wow, you know, my, my, my sister star and them 
They over at their house. They got to use the bathroom. They they telling my aunt Vita to pee on herself. Like like they did us foul that yeah. night. That was crazy. So um, they how many cops was in the house when? when Man, it looked like a hundred. I couldn't tell you. Like I said, it was three floors. You couldn't move. Yeah. They all shimmy past each other. The stairs wasn't so big. You know, it wasn't no big stairway for all of them to go. So they always run behind another. And we wasn't going down. That's why I said they was going, my family was going tumbling down. Yeah. So um, was this still in October when they came or was this November? It was November. Okay. Yeah, it was like, I want to say it might have been the end of October, early November. I want to say, yeah, it might have been, they got, they got him on November 4th, so it might have been November. Um, So they had you in boxes in the freezing cold. Yeah, dog, they had, they had, they, they took me out, my t-shirt and boxes, because they came at nighttime. They came at like 2, 3 in the morning. Yeah. So it might have been November, or it might be in um, nah, October? I want to say it's November, because okay. that's when I think they arrested him, November 4th. Okay. That's crazy. Um, and they bring you to the station in boxes, and what do they do? They question me for hours okay. and hours and hours. That's when I actually knew that Derek had said something, that Eric had lied, that Derek had lied, that Man Cox had lied. You know, they questioned me from like till sun up. You know, when Derek said they wore him down, yeah, they wore him down. Yeah. They ain't wear me down. Yeah. Okay, they ain't wear you down. So, um. When you was doing this documentary, they had the tapes on you too? They ain't had to make no statements. Okay. <laughs> That's why you didn't All right, no. tell them too. You ain't make no statements. <laughs> what you say? I don't, I don't know. No, I I don't know what they talking about. Yeah. I plead the fifth. I don't know what they talking about. Yeah. I exercise my right to remain silent. Yeah. I'm 15. I'm already going to DYS. Yeah. I know that part yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay. So, so you <laughs> That's was, why you didn't hear no tapes. Yeah, exactly. I didn't want It wasn't nothing being hidden. It was yeah. nothing. I didn't have no parts of the editing of nothing. Of course I just not. Had parts uh, of, course of all not. that. Getting it together. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that's crazy though. So, um, they okay. Did you have a um parent there with you at the no. time? No, that's illegal, ain't it? That was illegal. Yeah, that's illegal. Derek so. said the same thing. He didn't have one. Eric said the same thing. He didn't have one. Yeah, they didn't care about illegal at that time. Yeah, of course they didn't. So, um, there's a lot of things they did back in the day they can't do now. They or they won't or they try. They won't. They won't. They won't do it now, but they do now. What they didn't do back then is they kill you now. Yeah, yeah. They used to lock you up back then. Yeah, they lock you now up. Beat you up, fuck they you up. They chase you yeah. down and shoot they you shoot and you. say yeah, you was yeah. reaching for their gun. Now right. that's scarier. Um. So um. So they was at, they, and they still wrongfully convict you. They still they wrongfully do. arrest you. Yeah. They put they put the trio on you. What is it? Uh, disturbing the peace, disorderly yep. conduct, assault and battery. It's called the trio. That's what they do to you. Yep. Um, so they question you. They try to question you for hours on end. When did it stop? Um, I guess when they realized I wasn't going to say what they want me to yeah. say. Yeah, they was threatening you. Like you're yeah, gonna I got go hit to jail. Head a couple of times. He wasn't lying when he said there was. They, they, like I said, they wore him down. Yeah. They didn't wear me down. Right. I got the hit in the heads. I got the threats. I, I, no, man, I cool. I'm already, I'm 15, bro. Yeah. I'm not 17. I'm not 18. I'm 15. But I've already been through enough at 15. I was shot at 14. So I've already been through enough mm -hmm. to know the rules of the game. But because who my uncle was and how he raised me, I wasn't going to succumb right. to police pressure and say something that I knew wasn't true that would actually send my uncle to the death penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you say you shot at 14? I was shot at 14. Wait, mission? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, so we'll get back to this, but you were shot at 14. Uh, what happened? Take us to that day. Like, were you standing out there on the block or? Yeah, it was, a, um, we had a beef with a certain neighborhood, man. And, um, you know, Somebody I said they were coming down, and me and one of my friends was trying to beat everybody to the punch. Yeah. And, you know, my friend did it. He's so silly. He, I, I, you know, I believe, because where they was angled at, they was way up in the park. We was way down. So, yeah. 
you know, where I got shot with was a twenty two and my friend was carrying a twenty two rifle, but we had basically walked into an ambush and blah, 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 and he panicked and turned this way and yeah. shot me over here in the chest and I was like ah. Oh, so you got hit running. you got you got hit in the chest. Yeah. He took off running. Hell yeah. I where, took where did where did it hit you at? Like far as like did it hit right, any right. arteries or or it missed everything? Well, it was just this little Oh man, that's kind of close to something, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah, little... that's close to something. So, did did it almost hit something? No, or, it no? was in there. They they went in there, and took that thing right out. That thing stopped yeah. right there. It, oh, it like, stopped right it there. Stopped. It was a little twenty two oh, bullet. Oh, you're you're lucky it didn't. I know. Yeah. Took uh, a turn. Yeah, yeah, you're lucky. Um, you you was fourteen, and um, was that in the summertime? Um. I don't want to. It could have been the summertime. I want to say the summertime. Okay. Well, you survived that, man. Glad you're still, you know, here with us. Um. All right. So, um. You said you said your uncle would have been in jail for life if Matthew Stewart didn't fold. Matthew got rid of the gun, threw it in the river. How do you feel about Matthew Stewart? Um, wow, that's a good question that I've been asked. Um, sometimes I feel like thankful he couldn't yeah. take the pressure, and sometimes I just be like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you know. But if he didn't, my uncle would have died in prison. Right. If he, so from what I learned that, proud, you know, was that basically. His brother didn't share the money with him. His brother didn't share the law. The brother didn't share the lawsuit money with him. The life insurance the life policy. Life insurance policy. So Charles got the money. He got the money. He spent it. He got uh, eighty three thousand dollars. Be before January. Before all that, yep. he got the money. Yep. And he didn't give him no money. He didn't give him no money. So how long after did he go tell? Oh, it was in January. It was in January. It was in January, yeah. Yeah, he went and told. Yeah. And then Charles ended up committing suicide the yep. next day. Their whole family knew. You see that yeah. in the documentary? They all knew. They all knew. Yeah. That was crazy. We didn't all know. Yeah. We all knew my uncle didn't do it. Yeah, for sure. I Yo, the whole city knew he didn't do it. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's like, he didn't do Dude, that. Come you know on, what I'm saying? Man. That don't even make yeah, sense. Yeah, like. So, um. That's crazy, like because everybody was saying he ain't do that, you know. Um, and and I was young at the time. What was I? Ten years old. I was ten. Um, damn. That was my pretty much my downfall, my spiral out of control, man. Yeah. Because you know? then that put me on the radar with the police, and like I said, I was young. I wanted to come up. I wanted to be like my uncle Wild Bill, you know. And I was in the streets and. You know, even I was arrested for um, a Morning Star case that happened. Man. Okay, hold on. We're going to get to that because I got that. I <laughs> okay, got that. I I'm got sorry. all this stuff. I'm prepared. So, um, Matthew ended up dying from an overdose years later. Crazy. Right? Um, let me ask you this, though. Where were you at when the news came out Charles Stewart killed his, that he actually <laughs> killed his wife and he jumped in the Tobin, uh, jumped off the Tobin committing suicide? On January third, nineteen uh, ninety. I want to say I was in DYS. I want to say I was in DYS. You was in DYS at the time. I was at I was at DYS for intimidation of witness when I jumped on Eric. Okay, so um, what what happened with the intimidating witness? How did they? They um, um give you time for that or they, it just ran concurrent with the committed to the eighteen. Okay, so uh, how how old was you at the time? Fifteen, fifteen, and then you got out when? Um, I had went to what's the secure treatment. Um, I escaped DYS. So I ain't yeah. staying long, so I like, like I probably did like six to eight months. And you you escaped. was on the and in, then you was on the nineteen nineties is when you was just talking about. Yeah. I was making sure I was present. Yeah, well, for sure. <laughs> um so so you um you escaped and when when did they catch up back up to you? 
Um, Cause you probably went right back to mission. Yeah, I did. And, and they probably said, no, I we didn't know, actually. That we was said, the we crazy know where thing. He's, at. he's in mission. No, I actually didn't go back okay. to mission. That's crazy. You say that. I went up and hung around Interville. Oh, okay. In 1990. Okay, so that's so, okay, when I got so the you, taste of the gang life. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. They, uh, and you was over there in 1990. Shit, yeah, man. It was you know it was wild. Yeah. Yeah, so you was at what at Adidas Park over there? Yeah, I was on, I was on, I was hanging around them. I was a little kid, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I wasn't very active, but I was hanging around them. Um, I was learning, I was looking, I was, I'm a sponge for everything. So, yeah. you know, um, so he he um, so you said you was in D Y when he when that happened um. You, we kind of touched on this earlier because um, you said you found out some things during the documentary. But um, from this documentary, what information did you find out that you didn't know before? What other information that you found out, like watching this or doing this documentary, that you might have found out that you didn't know or your family didn't know beforehand? Um, just to, I, I can't even say because I, I mean, what we experienced, I pretty much. Mm, yeah. That I mean, as far as the behind the scenes, like more or less like the police, the the, the setting up, the the intimidation, like the tapes. I never heard the tapes, things yeah. of that nature. So yeah, you know. So do you believe the police was hiding the truth or didn't want to believe the truth? Um, they was doing both. both. They didn't want to believe the truth. They was they they didn't want to they was hiding the truth initially you know what I'm saying well they didn't want to believe the truth initially because you know like I said a certain reporter and them the certain you know Globe and all mm -hmm. them and Herald and all them they was already spinning it the way that the police was spinning it mm -hmm. but there was two officers that already had said they didn't believe Chuck from the first interview. And then that's when they were taken off the case and put on another case. Okay. And who was them officers? Were they I black or were they names. white? You would have to watch the documentary because I forgot their names, mm -hmm. man. Um, but they was the initial officers that told their superior officer that um, they didn't believe Chuck's story and they was removed from the case. So right there, they hid the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm D saying? And then when they did what they was doing, then they didn't want to believe the truth. Do you think them officers was black? All white. I don't know. I don't think they were because back then it wasn't many black detectives. Yeah. Okay. Um. David McLean, a friend of Charles Stewart, told police he want um that Charles told him he wanted to kill his wife. Was that right after the the incident though? That was that, before the incident. David McLean should have been accessory before the fact. No, I'm so, saying he told the police. Right after the incident, that he did this, tell the police yeah. that again they yeah. didn't want to believe. He yeah. called. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. He told <laughs> the police, and they, they I, didn't was that like believe. a week later or they something? They didn't want to believe, yeah. and they hit it again. Yeah. Um, but he, like I said, he should have. If it was anybody else, if somebody, if I told you I'm going to do something, you're fucking right. They're yeah. going to say you was accessory before yeah. the fact, and yeah. then they're going to say accessory after because you didn't report it. Yeah, exactly. Um. Going through this, right? Did people still look at y'all like your uncle was guilty? Yes. Yeah. Preferably police officers. Yeah. And, you know, the the, the racial ones that don't want to believe. You know, yeah. that some of them are politicians now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, the mayor apologized to your family. Why do you think the city finally finally apologized? I you, think I think that documentary had a lot to do yeah. with that. So, I think that's why I, that's why I appreciate Jason. Jason here, I have to appreciate him because that documentary had a lot to do with that. And if it didn't, um, I believe this would this day would have never happened. Right. You know? So when did you learn? that Mayor Wu wanted to apologize um, to you. And I'm sorry, because I was supposed to make that event, but again, I was in the house with the kids. Mm -hmm. And then my girl um, ended up coming back a little late, and I'm like, I ain't even going to make this event. And I was supposed to, that's why I hit you like, what time is over, you know? Right. But I was waiting for her to come back. And um, I definitely was supposed to pull up there. 
Um, no excuses though. Um, so Mayor Wu, um, when did you like find that out, and how did you find that out that she, she was going or, to issue um, your family an apology? So there was a couple of people that were reaching out to me that said, um, you know, Frank Fowler reached out to me from the mayor's office on um, Black Male Advancement, um, saying that they wanted to have a conversation with me. And I told them I'll be open to, you know, listening to what was, was being said. And then they had mentioned that to me. Um, when they had said it, I was very, you know, excited. You know, um, I asked my uncle if he wanted to come. My uncle's like, no, I'm straight. Y'all go get it for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, he has a lot of health issues, so he he didn't want to be around people like yeah. that. He still don't like and trust people. Right. He just turned 74. Yeah. You know? Um, I have read a proposal for her, which is basically that 7 Alton Court is now considered Turquoise Way. And I'm trying to, you know, get that name, Pauline Bennett Way, for my grandmother, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And... That was the only thing I asked for, pretty much, man, you know, that she did and, and, and she's going to do. And that apology had everything to do with all this. Yeah. Yeah, so your uncle, he don't he don't want to um, be around people. And he don't trust people. I heard him say that, too. Um, he don't trust people. And um, it's crazy because I wanted to I wanted to interview you. This story is crazy because I know this from, you know, when I was young. And I wanted to interview him on the podcast. I asked Kurt years ago like yo what's up with you know then he was like um you know he ain't doing too good and he probably don't want to do it whatever the case may be but i i did want to interview your uncle too so it's crazy that we're sitting down right doing this right interview. right and it's if, like if, this if was I meant to be that man we probably would have got it done when i it, first came yeah home. so because i'm like yo i felt like they, the city did him bad like it was that that was foul um a lot of people say this right so uh, people have different perspectives. Um, do you think the city of Boston is racist? Yeah. And it ain't just white people that's racist. You got black people that's racist towards other yeah. people too, you know. And But do you talk about racism? Like, yeah. 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 At that time, it was worse. Yeah, at that time, it was way, way worse. Um, so... To me, I, I'd be like, yeah, no, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like, I feel like they got their own community and we got our own community. Exactly, that's you what, what I'm saying. saying. Like, you so, know, if they came, like when they was talking about all that yeah. in the documentary at that time, it was like, okay, y'all come into Roxbury. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and y'all gonna feel how we feel when y'all come through Roxbury the same way y'all do us when y'all we go yeah. through. Southie, Charlestown, everywhere yeah. else. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, because I feel like, you know, they're in their area. We're in our area. They come, Our area, everybody damn near know each other. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. it's different than, you know, their area. And, and so it's I kind feel of, like how when they had the Ku Klux Klan that walked downtown, like all you had to do is just walk a little bit further up to Tremont Street, yeah. you'd have been in Lenox. Right. <laughs> if you really wanted to see some black folks. Yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? Like they did that downtown, but... At the end of the day, it wasn't really nobody down there that could yeah. help defend this young man. Yeah, and I, see, I, I, I think a lot of people get it misconstrued, too, because they think Boston's full of just white people. And I'm like, that's not, it's no, black people. It. It's like, yo, we, we here, our community. And I'm like, a lot of people don't understand the people that be claiming they're from Boston, these white people, they be from the burbs. I'm like, yo, you see them on TV? They're not from the city. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is a know. big difference. I like, you know, know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, you know a white person from Boston. They're just different than them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know the difference. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you go to, when you, when you like, some of the white dudes I know from prison that are good dudes that the, that will hold you down, you know, regardless of whatever. Yeah. They know, you know what I'm saying? But their parents came from that. But yeah. they was able to channel the difference you yeah. know what i'm saying so some of them are like that some of them are not yeah um i love my city it got some flaws but i love my city but that i think a lot of places it's the same thing you know what i'm saying like you uh, go down south pfft, you go down south they still got confederate you see flags. the guys in the boat thing <laughs> yeah yeah you know yeah, exactly you know what i'm saying <laughs> them chairs went up ever since then you know the price of them chairs um <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Did you did you or your family ever meet Carol Stewart's family? No. They never reached out or tried um, to? Not, not that I know of directly at the okay. time. Probably not. I don't think so. Did her family say anything? Because it seems like they don't talk much. Well, they, they set up a um, scholarship fund at Northeastern um, University that um, pretty much nobody that was black in Mission Hill went. Yeah. It was supposed to be for Mission Hill residents. And who gets it? Rachel Rollins. No, who gets the... Rachel Rollins. There's no more money now. There's no more money? Yeah. Who who was getting the scholarship, though? Rachel Rollins. She was getting the scholarship money? She got the money? scholarship. To oh, she got it before, you're to saying. Start her, to start her, her, her criminal justice career. Um, oh, she went, little, huh? she went to Northeastern? She went to Northeastern? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, nobody from Mission Hill that I know of, if they were, they were white, but the, in the head of nobody in the Bennett family. So your uncle ended up serving 12 years in prison for an armed robbery. Like, how do you fight that charge with your name being mixed up in this situation? Exactly. There's no defense. No defense. You're already guilty by the media in and Brooklyn. public opinion. In Brooklyn. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure everybody hears about this, and they're still skeptical in their mind that he had something to do with this. Yep. How did he Which get arrested why, for it? And the, the 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 case was bogus, like they said. The case was bogus. They talking about video tapes that was not scanned out, and saying they were robbed, and this was the day they was robbed, and mm-hmm. here's the video tapes to say that he um went to trial. Yeah, hmm. that's crazy. Um. That sucks. So 12 years upstate. 12, 25. 12 to 25 they gave him. Oh, and that's when you could do what? Half your time or something? Or you no, did two-thirds two, of the time. Two-thirds. Okay. Um, That wasn't a conquered bid? No. no. Okay. I know how they had them crazy conquered bids yeah, back then. Yeah, bids was 10 and yeah. 20s. And, and you, uh, and you 30, you do five months. Y- and yeah. Nah. You do a little bit of time, come nah, home or something like that, you know? Offender. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, your uncle didn't want to talk about the Charles Stewart case and didn't want y'all to talk about it either. But you said it ate at you. Why? So, those are guys I hung around. That guy right there was in my apartment. Mm -hmm. If he never was in my apartment, none of this would happen to my family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I just felt like I should never have him in my grandmother's house. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was other people that was in my grandmother's house that didn't say nothing like that, that didn't do any of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for a reward, you know, he looked at me like a little kid. Oh, he's, you know, he said in the documentary, he wanted to still try to blame me. You know, yeah. oh, two's just a little kid. Yeah. He's just running his mouth. No. At you 15, I was involved. Yeah. I wasn't just running my mouth. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, Let's tell it. You was trying to get a $25,000 reward. Yeah. Damn, Derek. That's crazy. Um, So you blamed yourself. Yeah, that's why I ate at me. Because yeah. if he was never in my house, he would never have been able to stop that lie. Yeah. You know, and my uncle, wouldn't, his life wouldn't have never been fucked up. You know, it went in the trajectory may not have been what it was. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So... You know, I don't know what his life would have been like, but the trajectory may have been yeah. different, you know. And he did an interview. He did one interview. Who? Your uncle? uncle. Okay. He did one interview with a certain newscaster who was supposed to shine light on my court case, my wrongful conviction. And I gave her that interview, and I said, I can give you my uncle. And I begged him. He was like, I don't want I said, uncle, she going to shine light on my case. You know what I'm saying? This was WBZ News. You could find it on YouTube. Cheryl Fiendaka. I'm saying her name only because she didn't do what she was supposed to do. She got the interview and didn't shine light on my case. Oh, so I'm going to have to search her, interview her, and ask her why she did this. Yeah, Yeah. because at the end of the day, I met her through Eddie O'Brien, who's the kid that the church choir guy that said they killed his friend's mother. So, you know, they're doing all these cases. I'm like, yo... All right, cool. So I spoke to her one day, and I'm like, um, you know, I've been wrongfully convicted. I'm Willie Bennett's nephew. You know, there's a pad in here. She's like, oh, yeah, oh, that would be a great story. I was like, yeah, you know, if you shine light on my case, you know what I'm saying, I probably could be able to tell 
my uncle to do an interview with you after 28 years. Because at that time, it was only 28 years. Yeah. And she was like, Willie? I was like, you know, he's never talked about it. My yeah. uncle wore a black and red sweatsuit to be a jerk. <laughs> I like his style. Yeah, I liked him when, um, especially when I heard him tell the police that you you, you stay out my way or something, or yeah, I, that, so I don't I, have to I, kill I, you or something. I I one hundred percent believe that might have been true. That's the only thing done might have been telling the truth about. Yeah, him. he didn't have no fear, huh? Wild Bill, he was called, that was huh? Wild Bill. Yeah. Um. So they questioned these, you know, these people, um, Derek and all of them. They said stuff. Were there other people that you said was in your house? Did the police question them too and they didn't say anything? Well, I don't know who was questioning because I didn't never get to see none okay. of it. You know what I'm saying? But I know there was people that was in the crib right. that never said nothing and the police never said nothing okay. to me about them because they never made no statements and they wasn't in no documentary because yeah. they got everything for yeah. that documentary. Yeah, yeah. because I was wondering, like, who did they ever talk to that was like, I ain't got nothing to say, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um so, getting to the Morning Star, 1993, uh, falsely accused of uh, um, stabbing at Morning Star Baptist Church. They decided not to prosecute, right? Yeah. But you got arrested. Yeah, they did it again. They raided my house, the same seven Alton Court. <laughs> 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 they raided that apartment. They, they ra took and me up out of there. Did they have a body warrant or a search warrant? They had a body warrant at that time. But they searched anyways. They searched anyways. They searched anyways. That was on, Mar I think it was like March 23rd or something. They came and arrested me. Now, this case happened in like 92. Mm -hmm. So so this is like June of 92. 92 situation. or 93? I, huh? I thought it said 93. It might be 92. No, the, the case, they locked me up. The case happened in oh, 92. Oh, it happened in 92, but they but locked they came up in, in, in got 92, me in 93. 93. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, After wow. interviewing okay. over 100 and something witnesses. And, yeah, they had found a couple guys, had a couple open court cases, man, that wanted to say I did something, man. And I was the perpetrator. And next thing you know, I'm back in jail on a case. And I got all these church people condemning me and saying I should be put away for life and I almost knocked over the casket. None of that happened. I didn't do none of that. I mean, it happened, but I didn't have no involvement in it. So they said a casket got knocked over? Yeah, so they said that the there was a situation where outside there was a fight. A young man started shooting. His friend ran into the church. So everybody that he did was fighting with chased a young man inside the church. Mm -hmm. You know, And they chased him all around the church while the service was going on. Wow. Yeah, and a couple of guys caught him, grabbed him, dragged him, beat him with chairs. He wound up getting stabbed eight times. I'm nowhere in that circle. Yeah. But because the police want me so bad, they listen to the first thing. Oh, who was there? The Mission Hill dude was there. Oh, Toot was there? Yeah, Toot was there. Yep, um, Tweet was there. Um, Jamal was there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, okay, thank you. That's, you know. Okay, that's crazy. So... This was at a funeral. They said shooting. There was a shooting outside. Yeah, it was a shooting outside. And, then a and dude ran inside. One of his friends ran inside. Did did the did. whole funeral pretty much chased him inside? Okay. Did and um I had eight nine co defendants, and I didn't know none of them, and they all copped out. I they copped out on the trial. They copped out. What they they <laughs> they was um. <laughs> Where was they from? They was from Vamp Hill, JP, all over the place. I was like, wow, I I don't know them, but I, I know the main guys from the neighborhoods. I didn't know these guys. Yeah. I ain't going to trial with them. I ain't copping out nothing. I'm going to trial by myself. Yeah. So, so in the process of that case happening, I was out on bail for armed robbery. Mm -hmm. So I got, my bail had got revoked. Mm -hmm. So I wound up going upstate while I'm waiting on this case. And I just started learning little things in the court. And there are witnesses that started copping out, that started saying this. They started copping out and saying, I ain't lying, I lied. I ain't, I ain't see him do, you know. And yeah. So, um, this is crazy. So, um. There was witnesses that got arrested that tried to say you was involved with this? Yep. Okay. 
man, there's some people's names, boy. But I ain't going to slander y'all. Why not? This is Ghetto Report. We don't harbor rats. We do not harbor rats. <laughs> they, they're in jail, though, man. Well, two of them's in jail <laughs> doing life biz, man. So they got what they, you know. But does, do the jail know? The jail that knows. they made you know, statements you know, you that they know, told. You know the jails. Know. Okay, the jails know. You know, but, you know Hollywood got the um. So the, what? The, what, the, what got it? The grand jury reports of uh, uh, certain things. Okay, so we don't harbor rats though. Nah, I ain't harboring them. Okay, I ain't harboring them. Okay, I ain't harboring them. Uh, so you don't want to say who, who? Who? I mean, their their name is probably irrelevant. Now okay, all right, we'll leave it alone, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're gonna dig it up later, though. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We we're gonna get to the bottom of this. So um. They end up dropping the case against you. They, you didn't have to go to they trial. They didn't drop it. They just know Prost it. Which they know meant, Prost it. Which they could bring it up later. They could bring it up later. Yeah. So for 20 years, I had the case still open. And, but they can't bring it up they, now. It's over now. Yeah. yeah. That, that time span's over. Okay. That's, so why did you go upstate? Um, I had copped out to an armed robbery. I had two co-defendants. My best friend, Tweet, he was, um, they was me, him, and my other friend, Colt, and um, my other best friend, um, so Tweet and me were co defense since I was a juvenile. So his he's all he was he's two years older than me. So when I was a juvenile, he's an adult. Yeah. So all his cases were adult cases. So they were gonna give him like ten to fifteen years for armed robbery if me and my friend I didn't have a record like that, that they was gonna be able to smoke me. So we had to cop out to a three to five. Me and my boy had to cop out to a three to five for Tweet to get a five to seven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we copped out. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You got to do what you got to do. Save your friends sometimes, yeah, man, definitely. especially. Um, so let's, get, let's, let's talk about something else. Tell us about, because um, that case is kind of crazy, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, your family went through a, a lot of bullshit. The city finally apologized. Maybe it's too little, too late. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, man, yeah, you gotta take care. In between that, should have did it, but yeah, you know, it didn't come out like this. Yeah, you gotta um, compensate this family, man. You know, um, please do. Tell us about yard time. What made you start that, and what's that about? Yard time. Um, yard time, man. You know, it was. Created in the yard, man, upstate, you know. I had a core circle of friends, man, that, you know, we used to all just chill, do what we do to survive in jail, man, you know. And when them visits didn't show up, packs didn't show up, <laughs> you know, them phone calls wasn't picked up, and mm -hmm. them females wasn't in coming through and all that, them letters... Next thing you had was your headphones in the yard, mm -hmm. you know, and I took pleasure in when they used to call the yard, man, because I don't know. I don't know where I got my little entrepreneur spirit from, man, but, you know, I was starting to run basketball leagues, man, in the yard, man, and I, because I miss Washington Park days, man. I miss them tournament days, okay. you know what I'm saying, and me being wrongfully convicted and, and, Sitting in prison, man, and not knowing what my fate was and years going by and seeing people come in and out and in and out, I was like, nah, this ain't what I want to do, man. I want to do something different, man. I want I want to help motherfuckers. I want to help people, man. I want to do, do this like I do in the yard, man. So, yeah. you know. That's good, man. So, um, you focus on mental health? or Yeah, I suffer from it, man. Yeah. So, I'm bipolar, so... You know, I had to learn a lot about it, man. You know, this lady, man, while incarcerated, I didn't want to talk to my friends because they'd be like, man, toughen up, man. Yeah. You know, and I used to be stressing some real stress, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I had seeked out a clinician, man. Um, and I'm glad they sent the one they sent because, you know, if they would have sent another one, I probably would have tried to haul at her or something, man, yeah. for entertainment purposes. But this one came down there and really kicked it with me and, you know, introduce me to some of my thoughts that I was dealing with, man, you know, because people don't realize, man, unless you got a cellmate, when that door closed behind you in that cell, man, it's only you and your thoughts, man, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I had to find a lot of inspiration to stay strong, bro. Like, I did 22 years, but like I said, majority of my life, I've been in and out of prison. I've been home five years now. This is the first time I'm 
been home this long. Yeah. And I'm 50. Yeah. You know, so getting into that mental health, it helped me understand the things that I was doing out here, which was, you know, inflicting harm, inflicting trauma, you know, doing what I was doing. And I didn't realize that was, like, you know, from trauma that was inflicted from my childhood that's unresolved, that I didn't take care of, that I didn't even know about, you know? I just thought things was normal. Mm-hmm. Just go about it. Like, Survival. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A lot of things going on in, you know, people's lives in the hood and you think it's normal. You just right. keep going. Like, like, like it's nothing. Is, it's like, happening. you know, it was just, you know, just some... I mean, at a time, a while ago, my PTSD would have been cool. Like, we just had some people just do some fireworks. Yeah. And I was literally about to jump on the floor and duck. And, you know, because now I'm aware of, like, what's going on more so. But before, I would have been like, oh. Oh, let me. Yeah. You know, now I'm like, yo, nah, this ain't normal. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. Being yeah. more aware of my mental health has helped me do that. And it also has kept me out of prison. Oh, yeah. Um, we're glad you're out of prison, man. You know, um, we hope you st- it st- stay that way. So um, when you, you said you're glad they sent this therapist to you or whatever, and you said you was um, you diagnosed, you, you was diagnosed with bipolar. Um, Personality did, disorder. Did you take medication for it or how did um, that work? So in there, this what I had. This what I first told her. Because you know, when you go, a lot of dudes, it's two things. A lot of the therapists think when you call for a therapist, either you're trying to get some well butrin drugs, or you're trying to knock the the, the, the staff. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the first thing I said was, I'm not here to try to knock you, and I don't want no medication. But coming out here, whole totally different story, bro. Yeah. Like I have to. I yeah. Have to, right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I deal with that, and I still have a therapist that I call. Yeah, that's good, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I this is there's things that go on out here that I I wouldn't tolerate in my other frame of mind. Yeah. So I try to keep myself my anxiety low, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I tear up because you know people don't understand. Like, this is a struggle for me, bro. Like, I'm 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 a whole headache when I was young, man. You know what I'm saying? I still have that in me, bro. Yeah. Like, and I don't want to be like that and. You know, some medication don't work for everybody. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Medication don't work for everybody, but it works for me. It helps me, yo, and I'm not afraid to admit that at yeah. all. Yes. Yeah, um, that's good, man, that you could talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, like, they don't want to talk about it. You know, and like you said, you tell your friends you're going through, they toughen up. They don't want to yeah, hear exactly. it. You know what I'm you know saying? saying? Yeah, exactly. And it's I, don't, like, I don't be wanting that. Like, that's why I tell people, like, now, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say... I'm an ambassador, but, you know, as far as, like, the hood dudes go, man, like, if that's what they want to tell me, then cool, man, because, like, more and more of these young dudes and older dudes are killing themselves, and now people are really taking notice. Like, yo, I didn't think he would, you know, I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I try to make awareness of it. Like, yo, and ain't, sometimes it's not cool to laugh at somebody that's struggling, bro, right. because, you know, that, that like, that's what prison taught me, yo. Like, I had to learn... The dude next to me in the next cell might not be having that good day, man. And he can come out and want to stab anybody in his vicinity, bro. Yeah. You had to learn how to read people's body language, bro, yeah. and know what, like, trouble is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's crazy you say that because I'm not, I'm not into laughing at people's pain. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, that shit ain't funny. Right. You know what I'm saying? People go through stuff. It could be you. You know what I'm saying? Like, um... I, I, that never been my thing. Um, so let's talk about, um, let's touch on it a little bit. You was wrongfully convicted. Um, you served 22 years in jail because of it, right? Yes. Um, how's that looking now? Like, um, so in 97, um, I was arrested um, for a murder that I didn't commit. Um, April of 1998, I had found guilty, sentenced to life in prison. Um, April 30th, I was released April 30th, 2019. It is now 2024 and I'm still 
waiting for a decision to happen on whether or not I'm going to trial. Um, it was a struggle, man. I, I could tell you like this, man, with the help of um, a certain young lady, man, that I really appreciate, man, and with the inspiration of um, that movie, man, Planet of the Apes, I'm sitting right here in front of you, bro. Yeah. You know, and my daughter grinding for me on the internet because my case happened in front of a night, 190 people, bro. And the Commonwealth found one witness to say, I killed his friend. And he had open cases. And in 2000, he told them he lied. He told them he lied before trial. They still put him on the stand at trial. They told him they was going to give him perjury and give him life. He still went through with it. Again, he told the judge in 2000 that he lied. A judge said, I don't believe you. He told the judge again in 2007 he lied. I presented at this point seven witnesses that said I didn't kill this man. And the one person that said I killed him, he's telling y'all I didn't do it. Why I didn't get out in 2019. He told him in 2000. Yeah. I'm up to 14 witnesses right now. That's why they don't want to go to trial. I found 14 witnesses that was at the club that night. They still only have one. Matter of fact, they don't even have one because he admitted he lied. They don't even have a witness. Yeah. My lawyers right now are waiting for them. They keep asking for continuances. They know I was wrongfully convicted. They don't want to have to apologize again to another Bennett. I accept Wu's apology for my uncle. They gotta compensate me for my case, though. Yeah. Um. Is it a scary thing? It is. Yeah. That's why I live my life the way I live it and have fun, yeah. enjoy life, because a jury can do it again. Yeah. We've seen it time and time again. People get wrongfully convicted and go to jail. It's a it's a bunch of people that's been coming home lately, for the past five years, six, six years, ten years, or whatever, wrongfully convicted. You know, a murder. All these people coming home. And, and, that, like, and that's a pattern. And they're not looking at it as, as, as a, a, a pattern of wrongful and, and the justices. You know, there's still guys that are there. Oh, dear, Fernandez. You know, um, my boy. Like, we trying to show that this detective, Keela, is dirty. They called him Mr. Homicide. Yeah. Like, a lot of his cases are getting overturned for murders. And when they're getting overturned, they're only picking and choosing certain cases to overturn. Yeah. And that's not fair. He's a fruit of a poisonous tree. So all the cases need to be reviewed. Yeah. All of them. All of them. Yeah. What's his name? Detective Keeler? Yep. Mm -hmm. Dan Keeler. Mr. Homicide. Mm -hmm. He still. Uh, he made he made prosecutors judges. That's why they don't want to overturn none of his cases. Yeah. Is he still on the force now? No. He probably is. Yeah. Um. Uh, so you did 22 years Um. wrongfully convicted. What type of things did you endure while you was in there? Like, what's the so it wasn't craziest, that I endured. Craziest. It wasn't that I was enduring much because I, you know, I always was prepared for whatever happened. You know, it was just the the, the initial bumps and bruises of dealing with the street things. You know, you had some unresolved issues that I had to deal with fights. Yeah. You know that I win, that I didn't win, that I did win. Some jumps, some you know we jump people. Yeah. You know, and like I said, the 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 maturity was the best part about that, yeah. you know, that endurance, is to be able to, after the first 10 years of getting fights and doing things and getting in trouble, the next 12 years you focused on trying to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But not knowing if that was going to happen was probably the most difficult part of it. Yeah. You know, dudes had dates. Some dudes didn't. Yeah, you you didn't have no date. You had a no. Uh, I had I had a I had a I'll put it like this. I had a um I had a life bid with eligibility eligibility of parole. of parole in fifteen years. But because I was convicted of another shooting, I had an eighteen to twenty. Yeah. So I had to serve my life bid first, and then I was gonna get parole to the eighteen to twenty. <laughs> then I had a nine to ten. <laughs> Like, I, like, yeah. Yeah. So, 
they upheld the conviction for the 18 to 20 and gave me a new trial for the murder case. Yeah. So that's why you're out. And the nine, uh, what you had a nine or what? I had an eight. I had an eighteen or twenty. They put two separate shootings yeah. together. Okay. And I had a, I had a life bid, and I had an eighteen or twenty. Mm-hmm. And they upheld the eighteen or twenty as a conviction, mm-hmm. right? But the judge said that I didn't get a fair trial, and that um, my lawyer was ineffective, and that newly discovered witnesses were available that weren't available during the trial that have pertinent information to my innocence. So he released me on bail. And I've been on bail for the last four, about to be five years. Yeah, how much was your bail? 10000 Okay, so 10000 We you, you ain't do it. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. These people are crazy. Um, What, what judge was that? Judge Peter Krupp, one of the best judges. He was a former... Um, he was a he was a former D, uh, district. He was a former defense lawyer in the feds, where he overturned the courtroom conviction to open courtroom things. He like he understands it. He gets it. He knows like people. Some of these judges are stuck in them nineteen thirty seven mm-hmm. laws. He knows he knows wrongful convictions happen more than not. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, been the judge that's been most mainly releasing a lot of the guys. Okay, because he know he knows better. He knows. Um. And this is the thing about the justice system. It's easy to get in there, hard to get out. Oh, man. Like I tell the young men that all the time, man. Yes. Yeah. A five-minute decision, a ten-minute bad decision will land you in prison for the rest of your life, boy. You can't get out of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes, in some cases, it ain't even a bad decision. It's just, it's just a wrong place, wrong time. They might say, yeah, well, he did it. And they want to stick to that conviction. They don't want that off. Like, no, he did it. We don't want to look elsewhere. Yeah, they, so mm-hmm. it's it's crazy how they're doing it, man. But I'm ready for trial. Shout out to my lawyer, Jennifer O'Brien, Pete, and, you know, Lorenzo Perez, man. I appreciate them, man, because, you know, these lawyers, when I had initially paid them to represent me, you know what I'm saying, it was like, okay, my first Rule 30 got declined, denied, and they could have just walked away. And they was like, nah, we believe in your innocence. We're taking this pro bono. What's the Rule 30? A Rule 30 is when you go in for newly discovered evidence. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, there was witnesses that was coming forward, signing affidavits that were at the club that night that was speaking on my behalf. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That wasn't around. That wasn't available. I found out through certain people, through certain investigations. I had to hire an investigator that I had a hundred and people, a hundred and ninety people on my witness list. My attorney didn't interview none of them. Where's, where's this attorney at now? <laughs> His name is William Crow. And the crazy thing about life, William Crow. You know the crazy thing about life. <laughs> he was Derek Jackson's lawyer during the Stewart case. He was the lawyer that spoke on Derek Jackson's behalf, wow. and he never even told me that. So I believe he sold me out. Of course. Where's he at now? He's around. He's a, he's a lawyer somewhere. William Crow. When you're not seeing that, name on the, like that, that so William when you Crow. Say, so when you ask me that question again, I apologize. I learned from that documentary that my trial attorney for my court case that I am on appeal for represented Derek Jackson during that Stewart case, and he never told me that. He had a conflict of interest. Yeah. And so when I tell you there was 190 witnesses on my case and he didn't interview none of them, he waited for the DA to tell him who they was going to present. So when you're going through this, right, and you know, do you, did you know there was all these witnesses or you, didn't have, you had no idea? Well, I knew it was a nightclub, but I didn't know all the ones that I knew that I remember who I spoke to. I brought them forward. They came and testified yeah. in my defense. But the people that don't want to be involved in none of this, yeah. they was gone. You know what so I'm saying? So you didn't find out to, about these 190 people till later on. I, I mean, I didn't find out. I didn't find out my 14 witnesses that came forward. I knew there was damn near 200 people in the club. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know where they found their one witness from. Okay, that yeah, lied yeah, on yeah. me. Yeah. Um, where's that witness at now? Um, he's somewhere out here. I don't know where he's, he's around though. Yeah, he's okay. around. Um, is he gonna come? 
Um, he 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 signed affidavits. He signed like okay, his, so he his, don't got a he he don't yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully we get this resolved soon. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully. That I'm hoping, man. Supposedly I start trial in May. We'll see. Yeah. I'm ready though. I don't think they're going to try. I had two regrets, man, when I was in there, man, which was going to the club that night, man, and not taking a stand in my own defense. Yeah. I'm taking a stand in my own defense this time. Yeah. Because I ain't going to let nobody tell my story. I told my lawyer that. Can't nobody tell this story better than me. I know exactly what happened that night from the minute I walked in, from the minute I walked out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see. I like that too, man. You sometimes you gotta defend yourself, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't put it in somebody else's. No, hands. that's why I'm here, brother. I'm gonna tell you the story, bro. The reason why I'm inspired the way I was inspired, bro. If you ever think about it, if you ever watch this movie, bro, Planet of the Apes. Apes. You know what I'm saying? When Caesar, when he went in that cage, bro, he thought his way out that cage. He came out and he united a community of apes. That's all I'm doing with yard time. That's why I'm bringing all these dudes together, trying to bring them to understand, like, yo, we can be a community, though. Like, don't let them label us all like what we used to be, dog. Let's show them what we are now today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was the whole inspiration. That's why my first logo was the Gorilla Head. But, you know, no funding was coming with that, so we had to change it and make it more normal. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to see that. You know what I'm saying? That's That might be a turnoff from them. Right. But, um... Hey man, this is one. I'm not gonna lie. This is one of the best interviews. You know what I'm saying? I really like this interview, and um, I appreciate you sitting down with us, man. Yeah, I told um, you I had you, man. You, yeah, for sure, you know. man. I appreciate it. Um, what, what's to come in the future for you? So, um, I'm in the works, um, with a couple of people. What I want for me personally for yard time, man, is to have a reentry home, man, for these dudes to come home to, mm -hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? I've been trying to talk to Cole and them, man, but they ain't taking me serious, man. Mm. You know, but I I always tell people, man, I'm a very smart dude. I just act dumb, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I use my intelligence, man, when I need to. Right. And, you know, I want to see dudes be able to come home to a, a, a yard time reentry home, man, where they know, you know, this is where I remember how this used to be where – it ain't where all these other places are where these people are not taking care of them. They ain't really helping them. They're just warehousing them and yeah. charging them. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we ain't going to do that. We're going to support them 100%, man, and make sure that they got the tools to stay out, of, out, man, because we winning right now. Returning citizens are coming home doing good because I tell people all the time, oh, I didn't know you was thinking about that. How? You wasn't in contact with me. I had this plan for 23 years. It's new to you. Yeah. It's old to me. Right. Only people that know this plan is... Hollywood, yeah. P Dub, Little Riz, Little Weedle, certain people, Little Swag, like people like that, like people that's been bidding with me. You know what I'm saying? That's been traveling, that's been in the trenches with me and themselves. Like they watched me do this from the ground up. Yeah. Like nobody supported me. Like I literally had to figure it out, bro. Yeah. Like I'm sitting in front of you because I figured it out, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When people left me, it was like, yo. Damn, I'm tired of watching everybody walk out them doors, man. I got to get my shot, bro. Hmm. I got to figure out how I can get people to come forward. And that's when my daughter started using my social media and, and, and re-getting re me back out there. I mean, you know, I was out here. I was somebody. I thought I was. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. So people still had love for me. It's been 20 years. Like, yo, you know? Yeah. How old is your daughter? Shakora is 31 now. Yeah, shout out to your daughter, man, for making it happen, too. Yeah, I need to fix that, man. We we got a, you know, little situation, man. We deal with each other. Um, you know, I'm not trying to be father. I'm just trying to be dad. But yeah. at the same time, you know, she's just like me, so we butt heads, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I always, man, appreciate everything she did, man. She was making three-way calls since she was 13 years old, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Her and Star. Yeah. Consistent, Star too. picking up them phones, man. You know, keeping me relevant. Yeah. Yeah, um, shout out to your daughter. Hopefully, whatever situation y'all got going on, y'all fix. You only get one dad. You know what I'm saying? So, right, right. Come on, fix that. Um, Yeah, so we appreciate you, man. And um, 
Hopefully we'll be talking to you soon again. You know. Yeah, man, we're gonna be back, man, when the case is over. Yeah, for sure. After you the know, case man. is over, the we case come is sit is back over, down. Man. Yeah, you know man, what I'm saying? You know? Cause I mean, this is a great thing, man. I appreciate you having me on there, man. You know. Um, shout out to everybody that's in the yard. Shout out to everybody that's doing good, man. Let's keep up the positivity. You know, yard time. You know, so um I appreciate you having me on the Ghetto Report podcast, bro. Right, we I have fun, man. Yeah, we appreciate you too, man. Castle, we out, man. Paint the picture. <laughs> I'm caught up in this fast life. Every morning that I pray. Gotta make it out some way. Put a smile back on my mama face. Yeah, I'm caught up in this fast life. Every morning that I pray. Gotta make it out some way. Put a smile back.